Welcome to Media Minute. For this episode, we're going to be talking about the unholy, the Oscars, taking a look at lost TV shows, and we're going to be discussing some of our favorite directors. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And kicking off this episode, uh, not too much in the way of trailers uh, no. this week. It's yeah, been it's very quiet. Definitely. The one that we managed to pull up has been uh, The Unholy. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah. Which apparently is in, Sam Raimi is involved, so I'm, my interest is peaked. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he just executive produce it, though? I, I think so. Yes, he did. Yeah. So he's kind of paid for it, helped pay for it. But it uh, looks like a modern horror type thing. Mm-hmm. Seems to be uh, some involvement. It's kind of like, it's called The Unholy, so there's kind of a, a church type uh, Mary Magdalene type aspect to it i think yeah like it from what i got from the trailer it was very um they think she's possessed by something good but it's actually evil yeah but yeah, can, can you be possessed by something good is that even a thing I suppose uh, yeah why not yeah uh, it just doesn't make for a very good story yeah, yeah i guess hey, <laughs> hey what did you do today i made sandwiches for homeless people yeah oh that's not he was possessed <laughs> I mean, good and he filled in potholes <laughs> yeah. it's like, thanks for your service what a menace but uh, doesn't have negan in it what's that Negan's in this one. Yeah. Isn't? From I like uh, Walking him. Dead. I like him as an actor. I I know him from Supernatural because he was Sam and Dean's um, dad. Yeah. So, yeah. I like him. I think I think he'll do a really good job. Yeah, it looks like an interesting movie. I'll mm-hmm. definitely be checking it mm-hmm. out. Oh, yeah. I, I feel like I've seen it before. Yeah. I mean, Your you, typical you, exorcism. You, reminds me yeah. of, uh, remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger, like the seventh day or something like that? Oh, or, or the, the ninth, ninth the day eighth, or something. Day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the third day. I don't I know. Think there Everybody's was a day. forgotten about that movie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, it's one of. I got nothing to say about it. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, also, the list for the uh, Oscar nominations has come out. Yeah, yep. this was weird. <laughs> um, not a lot on there that I kind of recognize. Of course, it's been a weird u- year with yeah, like, yeah, because nothing has come out in theater. Yeah. So there's kind of like some streaming stuff on there, and uh, the only thing I really yeah. recognized was like the animation category. <laughs> yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Yeah, like, like the best picture category. I think I recognized maybe two. See, like just because they would throw the trailers in front of YouTube videos. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I recognized like, actually, I recognized more than I expected. The only one that yeah. I didn't really know was the father, and I'm shocked because it's, yeah, that's it your has boy. my boy Anthony Hopkins, yeah. and I'm just like, how did I miss that? It actually looks really good. Too. It does. Like, I watched the trailer. I looked at like a few of them, and I was like, I'm gonna have to check some of these out because it's like I'm like, if they're nominated, like, I'm curious to see like why, you know? Yeah. There's definitely like your typical like uh, I'd print out the list because <laughs> I don't know any of these movies, but there's definitely a bunch in here that you could think like, okay, this is Oscar bait. Yeah. You know, like the moving story <laughs> of the underdog overcoming adversity. Yeah, but everybody loves that story. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, a, that's a classic story. Yeah, The Father looks really good. Uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. It's just a Black Panthers movie. I'm interested in that one because I, I could be dead wrong, so don't take me at face value here. But I think it's about an FBI informant that like kind of infiltrates the Black Panthers to kind of figure out what's going on. It looks yeah. really good. They got some really good actors in there, too. So it, I watched the trailer, and it just made me want to watch Dead Presidents, which was a great movie. Watch what, sorry? Dead Presidents. Anyone see that? Uh, no, a bunch of dudes go to Nam, come back, and become uh, bank robbers. And they use the face of dead presidents. Yeah, yeah well, they got like yeah. white makeup, but like it's kind of like negative exposure blackface. So it's all white with black eyes. Yeah, it was kind of no ninety. Mm, I think it was nothing. late ninety. Really good movie. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Judas and the Black Messiah looks decent. Uh, Mank, I actually really want to see. It's got what? my boy. Gary Oldman. Oh, yeah. oh. David Act- Fincher movie. Actually, I was looking. Didn't he get nominated for Best Actor, too, for that movie? Let me check. Yep. Let's pull up the handy list well, here. Let's do it in real time. <laughs> yes, he did. And so did Tony Hopkins. I thought you were oh, going to say Tony Hawk. Yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought so, too. I was like, what? No. Tony Hawk? When, what? When you've known Anthony as long as I have, I have you call him Tony. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> uh, Mank, yeah, it looks really good. It's just like a black and white throwback movie Ooh. about making movies in like the 30s. Yeah. If it's maybe. got Gary Oldman in it. I'm it's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll and it and David Fincher. I mean, come yeah. on. Uh, oh, oh, remind me again. David Fincher. I'm blank. Fight Club, Seven. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. S- the Social Network. Oh, definitely have to check them out then. Bunch Sorry. of stuff. <laughs> uh, Minari doesn't look... 
appealing to me. What what's that one? Uh, I didn't, Korean I didn't... family just kind of um, discovering the American dream. Oh, that sounds wholesome. Mm. It looks wholesome, and it's got a Stephen Yun in it, and I would cast that dude in anything. From you... The Walking Dead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wasn't he nominated for something? Um, <laughs> We're making Chris I, I, go yeah, through yeah. the list. I'm just gonna <laughs> spread these <laughs> just out keep here. Going. Yeah. I yeah, be, boom, yeah. yeah. Got nominated for Best Actor. Oh, so awesome. So good for him, Steven Yeun, crushing yeah. it. Nice. But yeah, I love that dude. He'd, yeah, he's a great... watch him in yeah. anything. He was like part of the only reason I watched The Walking Dead, to be 100% yeah. on, honest. A lot of Walking Dead references to what we're going to Yeah, yeah like, wow. Yeah. That wasn't even on purpose. Yeah, no. we got, it was an accident. I swear we didn't script this. Unintentional segue. Hey. <laughs> hey <laughs> Okay, let's just speed through this then. Uh, Nomadland with Frances McDormand. Looks I, pretty good. I want to watch that one. I've heard really good things. Yeah. Bit of a slow burn by the looks of it, but you know, it looks... I can't even remember what it's really about, to be honest. I watched all these trailers like back to back to back, so they kind of blend together. I think that one, it's like this woman kind of is tired with life, so she decides just to like get in in a car and just drive and just like kind of discover America. I got three billboards kind of vibes. Ooh. Remember that movie? Yeah. That was was good. Well, she got Almost impossible to watch twice. Oh, yeah. It's so devastating. It's a. But like, I'm pretty sure she got nominated too, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Prepared. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we're so professional uh promising young woman kind of looks like a me too slash like revenge kind of movie you see what uh one of our co-workers i'm just Ray, going off the trailer he yeah. um he watched it and he couldn't re- like he couldn't stop recommending it he said it was one of the best movies he watched all year and yeah. ray watches a lot of movies so it looks really well shot yeah, the cinematography I, 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 is crazy just, yeah i've heard some pretty good things about it i so. think another big reason people are excited about the oscars this year too is like for the first time in a long time i think there's more than one female director up for um oscar for best director which yeah. i'm obviously mm-hmm. kind of excited for too so yeah i think so yeah I, I believe that's the buzz yeah and the last one the trial of the chicago seven and I, I need to see that as well. It's yeah. got uh, Sasha, the guy plays Borat. Yeah, yeah. Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, whoa, Sasha what? Sasha Baron yeah. Cohen. And it, like, it, I'm assuming it's a serious film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. I'm sorry. I only know him as like Borat it's and like Bruno. It's about a civil rights protest, I think. Yeah, and a bunch of guys get arrested. And yeah. Just oh, yeah, because they got like charged with like a horrific crime. And then like everybody was up in arms about it because it was, um, a, I can't remember. Yeah. It was intense, yeah, no. though. It was very intense. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even sure. Like I said, I watched all these trailers back to back to back. So I'm like, <laughs> but no, is Anthony like, Hopkins in this one? No. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, those are the best pictures. Yeah. Nominees. I'm going. Uh. All right. Just based on trailers alone, I'm going to make a prediction here. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to go with. Ooh, that's a tough one. I'd prefer if Mank. Wins, but I'm, I'm thinking Nomadland. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think so, too. Yeah. I think Chicago 7 picked up a few Golden Globes. I think oh, yeah? so, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think, like, all of these, from what I've seen, it's, um, all of them are, like, really well shot, really well done. So, I'm, I think it's going to be tight. I don't know if I could call it. Like, I if I... Yeah, there's no bad movies in here. Yeah, though. like, from they're all or, good. Or bad looking movies, I should say. But... Yeah. I, I know, like, Anthony Hopkins and Gary Oldman are nominated for Best Actor, but I kind of hope Stephen Yoon wins, just because, like, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just I mean, share, share the love. Like, how yeah. many awards does Hopkins need? Right? Yeah, like, really? Yeah. Same thing with Gary Oldman. Like, everybody knows they're incredible actors, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not surprising. It's common yeah. knowledge. Up and coming. All right, so Stephen Yoon, Best Actor. Yeah. I hope so. That would happen. be awesome. <laughs> I'd be Make very excited. Happen. Hope, hope it comes true. We have no yeah. power. We, yeah. <laughs> we have absolutely no power. If any of the Oscar people are watching, please give it to our boy. Yep. That's all we ask. Right. Cool. I guess that covers the Oscars. Nice. <laughs> well, um, I mentioned last week that I was watching this uh, Resident Alien uh, yeah. yep. series. So I watched like the first four episodes, and then I watched a couple more, and Linda Hamilton shows up. Oh, hey. wicked. It's like, okay, Sarah Connor. And that got me thinking, it's like, what else has she been in? So apparently way back in the uh, – Oh, boy. Way, way back in the 1980s. Uh, <laughs> I remember this. Yeah. 1987. She was in a Beauty and the Beast series yep. with Ron Perlman. <laughs> I can't see. I, I remember can't. it. I've yeah. seen it. I oh, there's, I have con- I have conflicted emotions on this. Yeah. I won't lie. And here's the thing: you think of Linda Hamilton as kind of like a uh, like a like a strong female character. She played Sarah yeah. Connor. Oh, she T2 was. T two. Yeah. Him. But uh, okay, let, let me give you the, the description. Oh, of Beauty and the Beast. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> no. Oh, 
District Attorney Catherine Chandler, after being attacked and left for dead, is rescued by a half-man, half-beast named Vincent, who lives in secret caves and tunnels beneath New York City. When Catherine returns to the surface to resume her life, she and Vincent are not only in love, but share a powerful psychic bond that enables Vincent to sense danger. So the plot line is basically... Catherine gets in trouble and Vincent saves her. That's like the entire series. Oh, God, I'm having flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I watched that show. I don't even know why. I hated it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, I've, I've seen Ron Perlman. Like, everybody knows him as Hellboy. Like, yeah. I think he's like yeah. the big thing, right? Sons so, of Anarchy. Yeah. yeah, that too. But seeing him as like a romantic lead. A large cat man romantic lead. Yeah, and the prosthetics were. Yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, for the uh, 80s. They put, I mean, they put been, effort into yeah. it. But yeah. Look but big. yeah, and same thing with like Linda Hamilton. I can't picture her as this like, oh my God, save me! Because it's like, no, she would just, yeah, kick butt. <laughs> like I don't yeah, know. <laughs> no, I, I can still vividly remember like the scenes in the sewer. Yeah, and just uh, yeah, it's terrible. I mean, show. they went for it, so I got to give them that. Here's a fun fact <laughs> uh, for fans of Game of Thrones: George R. R. Martin was actually a staff writer on that show. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point, considering you're bad. Yeah, I don't know. That's a weird thought. But apparently they tried to remake this in 2012. Oh, <gasps> no. And uh, I think it lasted like a season. They oh. re- they it actually re- got to air? Yeah, they reused the oh. names Catherine and Vincent, but that, that was like the only connection to it. Wasn't it called like Beast or something? Uh, there was a movie called Beastly. Oh, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. It's, oh, or or the Beast just... wasn't even like a beast. He was just like a blue yeah. guy. Yeah, he, was, he wasn't like... The typical... Just a guy with a five o'clock shadow. Yeah. Yeah. But, okay, never uh, mind. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, finding out about, about the show kind of got me deep diving into uh, some lost TV shows yeah. and lost media. So we decided to uh, <laughs> look for shows that maybe <laughs> we would have watched when they were on, but somehow they flew under the radar. Yeah. Yeah. So who wants to go first on this one? I always go first. How about you, Mike? (laughs) Well, I did mention Sam Raimi earlier. Yes. And, of course, he was known in the 90s for Xena and Hercules. He had another show, though. Is it it Young Hercules with Ryan Gosling? No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) It it was called Mantis. It was uh, filmed in Vancouver. Oh, nice. It ran from uh, 1994 to 1995. And the plot is, after being shot in the spine by a police sniper while trying to rescue a child during a riot, Dr. Miles Hopkins develops a bulletproof powered exoskeleton and becomes a vigilante. That's what you do when you, when you have yeah. one of yeah. those. But, uh, Obviously. Of course. There was a lot of those did. shows in the 90s where like someone has like a super-powered suit or a super <laughs> they, they had There was one called Viper where it was just like a Dodge <laughs> Viper. <laughs> it was just a Dodge commercial? <laughs> yeah. With, like, guns and stuff. It was, it was like Knight Rider, but it was a Dodge bike. <laughs> I'd drive that. Yeah. Uh, it lasted, totally. like, a season or two. It ends at a cliffhanger where, like, the main character may or may not be dead. Ooh. Yeah. Apparently there's some mm. time travel stuff, but it seems like something that I would have watched yeah. growing up, but just never never saw it, especially with Sam Raimi as yeah. the director. So, yeah. Wait. Usually, like, he usually puts out really good stuff too, right? Yeah. But that's kind of funny though, just like Mantis. Yeah, it's uh, huh. short. For, it's like an acronym for like some sort of. R- it's like M dot A. Oh, okay. I'm okay. not going to go through like I, every letter. I literally thought the guy was just like he became a praying mantis. Like I, yeah. I like you talking I, like, about the it mask really. of the the suit kind of looks mantis ish. <laughs> but that that's okay. about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so that, cool. That's my first one. I like it. Yeah. Do you want to go or? Yeah, I can. Um, mine's not really a TV show, more of a brand. Yeah. All right. Uh, Mad Balls. <laughs> oh, from, yeah. From the 80s. They had a couple of uh, direct to video, direct to VHS. I yes. Oh, say. wow. Okay. Uh, videos. They didn't, I, don't, I don't think they had a TV show. I think they did. Did they? I might be thinking of something else, but I'm sure there was a Mad Balls cartoon. Yeah, well, it, it, was a car- it was animated, yeah, but I'm yeah. pretty sure it was just on home video. Okay. But either way, whatever. It's a, a toy from the 80s, just yeah. these really. Kind of in the vein of a kind of garbage pail kids yeah. type of humor, yeah, style, kind of that thing. There was ugly looking foam balls. I don't even know what you were supposed to do with them. Yeah, but in the show, yeah, there were these balls sent from space that were mad. They, uh, well, not yeah, they, they were actually mad. weren't that mad. Yeah, they were they're actually pretty ha- happy go lucky because they came to Earth to play rock and roll music. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I remember that. Need I say more? Remember them being a thing though. That was like a pre, uh, like crazy beans, yeah, oh. pre pog type collectible thing. They're actually still making them. Oh yeah, this what? is a, a mini version. Mad balls? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah, I looked it up. There's like, like they're like smaller versions, maybe the size of like a golf ball. So if you feel oh. like throwing balls at people, yeah, pick up some mad balls. You got an excuse now. Well, that was kind of a thing. It's just like uh, gross things for for kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Slime stuff yeah. coming out of stuff. And yeah. apparently there was like a garbage pail kids movie as well. <laughs> yeah, was it was live a, action. I haven't seen it. I had it on VHS. Oh yeah. I think I still might. Oh, oh boy. Good Lord. It was amazing. <laughs> it, it's it's one of those so bad it's good movies. Oh okay. I I remember having uh, like the stickers or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I had a ton of those. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So bring back Matt. Well, I guess there's. Never kind of left, but uh, bring it back harder. Yeah, go big, go big, go mad, huh? go balls. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> Rachel. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the one, the first one that I found, it's called The Singing Detective, and it came out in 1986, and it only had one season, so it didn't last very long. But like <laughs> reading the synopsis of this thing, I was kind of like, this sounds fantastic. Basically, uh, tormented and bedridden by a debilitating disease, a mystery writer relives his detective stories through his imagination and hallucinations. So he actually thinks that he's the detective that he wrote about, like, years ago. And um, So Shutter Island? Yeah kind, of. yeah. kind of. That's basically it. But I thought it was super interesting because, like, I actually watched a little bit of, like, one of the episodes, and I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Like, it was it was really funny. It was uh, really interesting, too. And, um, yeah, it, it looked like a fun time. I guess it got canceled because, like, the main guy was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then he just left. And they were like, well, okay. Well, like, I, we can't really do anything. They didn't bother recasting or anything? Oh, yeah. no. They just got to a point we're where it's like... We're done. This yeah. show's going nowhere. Let's, uh, well, let's, call, let's, guess, let's wrap it up, everybody. I guess, like, the first few episodes, people were really interested in it. And then as soon as, like, <laughs> it got near the end, they were like, eh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can only do so much with a singing detective, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. All right, Mike? Yeah. Uh, my second one, it's a... Uh, television series called other world premiered in 1985 nice. here's the synopsis while visiting the pyramids in egypt a family is abandoned by their guide and mysteriously transported to the other world it's a world that's split into 77 unique provinces and run by a tyr- tyrannical government and it's basically pre-sliders sliders oh because nice. they go into like a parallel world and each one of these provinces was supposed to be like a different kind of society i miss you cubo yeah <laughs> it's a sliders joke. Um, really niche joke. Yeah. <laughs> there were only eight episodes uh, produced. Uh, I've actually seen a couple of them. It, it's 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 interesting. It's a yeah. like I said, it's kind of got like a sliders feel, except if the sliders were like an individual family. Okay. Um, so fun fact: some of the map paintings that they use were reused for Star Trek: The Next Generation. <laughs> hmm. Yep. Nice. Yep. All right. And uh, unfortunately, we're not. Probably won't see a DVD release uh, because they have an episode where they feature kind of rock and roll songs, and uh, they have music from the Stones and the Beatles, and to pay out that money to get yeah. the license for that. that ain't, that's not a cheap that's date. That's not, nope. probably not going to happen. So. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, yeah, fun show. Like I said, it's one of those things that if I knew, well, I was two at the time when this came out, so um, I probably would have watched it, though, if I, yeah. it was one of those things. For sure. Yep. I guess, I guess it's me. Yep. Um, I just have one word. Firefly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Next. <laughs> that, that's it? Yeah, that's it. You got nothing That's all up. you need to say. Firefly. Yep. Firefly. I actually started rewatching Buffy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's kind of been tainted now. Well, so has Firefly. T- yeah, I know. <laughs> For the same <laughs> I, reason. I didn't think you'd bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all Joss he said. Whedon, what all are you he doing said. Now? Was literally like, oh yeah, I'm rewatching Buffy, and then you were the one that was like, yeah. yeah. And I forgot so Josh Whedon did fi- Firefly for a brief moment there. <laughs> You're like, Mike, why are you bringing this up? I'm like, oh. um, I just want to, since, since I brought it up, it, it's so nineties though. <laughs> Buffy is so nineties. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, you got you got Seth in there. You got a uh, oh, what's the one girl from uh, American Pie? Uh, I Allison. Fr- yeah, something. Hannigan. One time at band camp. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. in a pre pre American Pie. Oh, so she also in like How I Met Your Mother. Uh, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but yeah, Buffy. Lots of frosted tips. Oh yeah. Yes. In that show, it's uh, it's, it, it's pre Twilight. 
Twilight yep. as well. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Because you have uh, uh, Borneas or whatever his name is. He plays Angel, who's kind of like the mysterious vampire. Uh, yeah. Lots of brooding. Love, love interest, yeah. Can Lots we, of smoldering. Yeah, but yeah. at least he didn't sparkle. No, he did not sparkle. So I can give him that. <laughs> yeah, but Brad Pons, Point, points for not but yeah, he didn't sparkle. Yeah. Points for not yeah. sparkling. I'm not as far of the series where she actually knows that he's a vampire yet, but he does this thing where he mysteriously shows up. It's like, hey, Buffy, you got to be careful. And then <laughs> runs away. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a little bit more than that. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's his the, only the, advice. Yeah, he just shows up. It's like, be careful look, of you, what? Yeah, you look cold. I'm gone. Here's my leather jacket. Oh. Don't, for, don't forget to bring a towel. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's <laughs> <laughs> from South Park. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a classic, though. Oh, I yeah. think it's a good one. Never watched it. No. What? Yeah. Eh. Actually, one, one episode from Buffy actually gave me nightmares. I remember that, like, vividly. There was, like, one where... I can't remember, like, I, I remember, like, a little bit of it. It's, like, this thing was going around and, like, killing people, and then there was just, like, was skin a vampire? everywhere. Well, no, it was, like, the, bo- the, the, the body, like, the skin of the body was there, yep. but, like, the inside was gone, so it was just, like, a, a meat suit. And, I, <laughs> like, I, for some reason, I was just, like, oh, my God, because, like, cause, like I, I was, like, I think um, pretty little at the time, so. Who's the guy we talked about last week, the documentary, the creature character guy? Uh, Doug Jones. Yeah, Doug, yeah, he's, yeah, he's in an episode. Yeah, he is. That. Yeah, <laughs> it's a like it. neat episode too. There's no dialogue in it. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, I like when shows do that. Yeah, yeah. No, I was ready to try some something new. They also did a musical episode at one point. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just a Buffy musical. Yeah, that's episode. not even surprising. Yeah. For some reason, we, like you brought up Firefly, we're out of Buffy tangent. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Buffy's that's good. That's how we do. That's how we do. We go on tangents. Yep. Um, okay. Well, I guess that's me. The next one that I got is called Pushing Daisies. And it uh, went from 2007 to 2009. So it actually had like a little bit of a good run. It had two seasons. And um, the synopsis is a pie maker. They were very specific about that. Like not a baker, a pie maker. um, Who can bring back the dead with a single touch or take away life with a single touch. And I was like, ooh, this sounds interesting. Um, But it had like a pretty short run. Like the episodes, like I guess didn't hit for a lot of people. But at the same time, they also won quite a few... Golden Globes yeah. while they were on and like some Emmys and stuff. So I was like really surprised they took it off. But it sounds I, like a showcase television show. Ah, uh, I think it was. Yeah, I can't remember. I like I like vaguely movies. remember it being an on, but I I don't think I've seen an yeah. episode of it. But it like it looked really interesting. I, like I watched the trailer. I was like, wow. I'm like I would have totally watched this. But like the thing <laughs> is, is like I was still pretty young at this time. So it's like I wasn't really big into reality. Like, Shows the, about pies. Yeah. It wasn't about pies. It was about the fact that she or could a pie kill. Maker. Well, no, she could kill so- kill somebody or give them life again. She had, like, the power of life. That was the whole thing. She jumped out she of the was bushes just a pie go, maker. surprise! Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> That's why they pay us the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get paid. <laughs> yeah, he can't see the chains that are around her ankles. Yeah, we, we actually just sit here. Yep. But, uh, they yeah. They feed us. It looked it That's looked nice. interesting, so I was I was kind of sad to hear it canceled. Yeah, that actually does sound familiar, but yeah, I can't yeah. say if I ever yeah. saw. Yeah, I remember the title, but I don't think I've seen any yeah. episodes of it. But yeah. Yep. Cool pie show. Do it. Again, it's not about pie. <laughs> you do not listen. Hey, why, you, why you stressed you stressed your first point was very important that this lady's a pie maker. Oh, I just thought it was funny because like I, I've never heard of somebody just as specifically a pie maker. I was it's a specialized like, industry. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a baker. It's like, cool, so you do everything. But this, like in the synopsis, they were specific. It was like pie it's maker. It's a pie maker, yeah. That's it. That's all she does. It's like, oh, all right. Well, moving on from pies <laughs> to our favorite directors because I have absolutely no idea how you would segue that. Um, <laughs> Three, two. Segway. segway! There we go. There we go. Oh, you, you can like... Split screen that. Oh, yeah, no, it's great. Have an explosion there for no reason at all. Yeah, (laughs) maybe some uh, some air horns or something. Yeah. Uh, We're going to talk about some of our favorite directors. Yeah. 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 I started at the last thing, so one one of you has to throw themselves on the... I'll do it. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Yeah, so the first director I've talked about quite a bit on the show, so, like, nobody should really be surprised, but it's M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he's a writer director, as I said before. Part of the reason I got into this industry because I was very inspired by him. Um, he's created over eighteen films, and my favorites are Split, The Village, and Lady in the Water. He said eighteen. Yeah. I mean, that's impressive. Right. Yeah. Um, he wrote uh, She's All That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he also wrote Stuart Little. Little. Yeah. 
Yeah. That one I was like, what? Like I didn't know that until like years later. I was yeah. in college and I was like, what the heck? I'm surprised that the Sixth Sense didn't pop up on your list. Oh no, um, I I liked Sixth Sense. I thought it was a really good film, but I also felt like a lot of people overhyped it too, in the sense of like the twist at the end. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's still a good movie. Oh no, it's a great movie. I'm not dogging the movie, but um, another crazy. I found some facts on it. Um. He became the highest paid writer in Hollywood when Disney gave him $5 million to write signs. To write signs? To write signs. And they're like, here you go. Here's $5 million. Write a Write a movie. I could write it for two. Yeah. <laughs> totally. It's my final offer. <laughs> That's it. That's all I asked for. Um, and then Six Cents, uh, Unbreakable in Science, grossed over $1.3 billion worldwide. Yeah. Which I was like, whoa. I believe that. I see signs, but Unbreakable? Oh, yeah. After the Sixth Sense, he was on like a, yeah, he a was on crazy fire. streak. Yeah, yeah he was just um, throwing up three pointers like crazy. Another like fun fact I found out was that he was actually offered to, to direct not one, not two, but three Harry Potter films. Like he was, they were actually gave him like a chance to like mm. do one of them, and each time there was a scheduling conflict, so he couldn't yeah. do it. Probably um, for the best. Yeah, considering yeah. how Avatar turned out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't talk about Avatar. No. Um, it's kind of funny because I guess his middle name, Knight, he completely made that up in college. He wanted to sound edgy and stuff, so he's like, I'm M. Knight Shyamalan. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, I... but that was just his thing. Um, <laughs> him and his his wife mm-hmm. and parents, along with like nine other family members as well, they're all MDs or have PhDs. Ooh. So I was like, oh, it's kind of fun. I'm like, that's not really about him, but like, okay. So um, yeah, I'm pretty sure like, his parents were like, uh, no, like, don't do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I gotta nail it. Yeah. yeah. If I fail, I'm I feel in like, trouble. yeah. I feel like with that much pressure in your family, you're probably like, ah. Yeah, you gotta right? knock it out of the park. The Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I've actually found a quote that I, I kind of resonated with. I thought it was really cool. He said once, um, if I'm hesitant about an idea, then it's not the right idea. Yeah. When like, in doubt, oh. throw it out. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's kind of cool. But yeah, obviously, I really like his work. And um, yeah, he's one of my favorite directors. For okay. sure. Chris? Uh, okay. Let's see, who should I do first? Actually, my, the, my first guy, uh, definitely not a household name, but his movies pr- are, for the most part, uh, Milos Forman. Yeah. He did uh, Amadeus, which has come up there multiple times yep. okay. on this show. Also did uh, People vs. Larry Flint, yep. which is Woody Harrelson crushing it as um, oh, the creator of Hustler magazine. How was it? Larry, Larry Flint. Oh, my God. It's in the title. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take you to get there. Yeah, it's like, where is Florence, Italy, in Europe? Yeah. Okay. Who won the War of 1812? Yeah. Or what? Uh, when did 1812 happen? Uh, did Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey? Yeah. Oh, that was a good cool. one. I actually didn't like that the first time I watched it, but once I rewatched it, I was like, okay. Isn't yeah. that the thing that kind of made Jim Carrey go crazy? Yep. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he wouldn't break character. He played Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Famous comedian from like the seventies. Yeah, well, because that was one of his heroes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. he was. He definitely, went, he definitely went a full method. Yeah. Yeah. Turned into a. Yeah. Beep. A method head. A method head. I like that. There you go. <laughs> yep. But and oh, uh, and I cannot forget one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah. Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Where uh, Louise Fletcher plays Nurse Ratchet, one of the most. Oh, just yeah. worst villains in cinema history. Aren't, is, isn't she getting? A, she's getting a show, right? Did we talk about that? Yeah, Nurse yeah, Ra- there, there yeah, no, there's a Nurse show. Ratched show, but yeah. it's not the same actor. No, 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 oh, no, okay. no. Yeah, she's. But Louise Fletcher was also in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. That's Kai Wynn. Waiting for it. Yeah. Okay, when you say like worst, I guess villain. Do you mean like in the sense that she was just. She was really good at playing the villain, yeah, or like she you was get, just bad. You get mad at the, oh, okay, the screen. Okay. Like you know how like. What was that kid from uh, Game of Thrones who played Lord Joffrey? Joffrey, Joffrey yeah. and he would just like get like death threats in person on the street. Yeah, like that that See, kind of level. It's like you're way past recognizing that's an actual actor. Yeah, and you think it's the character. See, like to me that bothers me because it's it like he actually troubling. he like actually had to drop out, like dye his hair, and like completely like go under because people were actually like yeah. trying to kill him. Yeah, that's messed up. It's like, dude, he played a role and he played it really well. That's it. Leave him alone. Yeah, it's so yeah. weird, like when people can't separate. No, movies. Like, it's like like telephone numbers yeah. in movies. Yeah, they always gotta be five, 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 five one, yeah. two, three, four, because people will actually call those numbers. Oh yeah, well, wasn't it that song or like oh, what's that song? Eight six seven five. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. didn't yeah. they? Ha- they yeah. actually yeah. had to like take that number down because people kept calling it. Yeah. Could you imagine being that person? Like, yeah. come on, man. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure. And before the days when you could like block calls, yeah, it was just like your phone would ring. That was it. Oh God, that'd be brutal. Yeah. If I remember right, this could be just like an internet story, but I thought someone actually owned that number and held on to it because of that song. Yeah, and then sold it to like a radio station or something. Could be. Really? I, th- I, I could be. Yeah. I could be remembering this wrong, but something to that effect. It sounds like an urban legend. Could be. A little bit. I could I, see it happen. I didn't really fact check it. This yeah. is like a vague memory from like 15 years ago. So. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Don't quote there, me. There's <laughs> different area codes and stuff too. So yeah, it might be true. like a few different stories. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, good luck. I, good yeah, Miller's Foreman. I had to go basic for oh. my first uh, pick, James Cameron. Hey, oh. Okay. I mean, Terminator, Aliens. He's like, got a p- yeah. pretty yeah. good track list. I mean, what, you know, 80s sci-fi, 70s sci-fi. And the best movie pitch ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everyone the dollars. St- yeah. yeah. I think we, co- we covered that already. I think so. But we'll do it again. Well, Actually, I'll do it backwards. So. Yeah. Yes. Aliens. No, that didn't work like that. And then uh, dollar store. <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, his actually his first film was a Canadian American sci-fi short film called Xenogenesis hmm. and uh, Interesting. You, you can actually watch I found it on YouTube so if you want to see Cameron's first film cool. it's, it's up there I never heard of that fun fact about uh, Xenogenesis his initial uh, investor a dentist pulled out of the project after seeing a demo of the film but the demo was later seen by Roger Corman Hmm. made him director of Battle Beyond the Stars. Wow. He was actually doing model work for Corman. Nice. So that's uh, that's kind of how he got into the directing thing. And, of course, he's known for all the Avatars films yeah. that we haven't yeah. seen yet. The, that yeah, really, I'm like not sure anyone Four really coming down the pipes? Yeah, there's four coming down the pipes. I'm not sure who really cares at this point. I don't. Yeah, well, didn't he do it, like, in a really weird way where it's like... They yeah, he shot them all out. Like, yeah, so he kind of did, like, the Peter Jackson thing. It was, like, yeah. all at once. Like, that would be... It's a long time to shoot. Yeah. And, of course, mm-hmm. uh, the pandemic didn't help things. Not at all. So I have no idea when we'll see any of these. And using the p- papyrus font oh, yeah. is unforgivable. You know why they do that, though? Yeah, it makes it like, easier It's easier read, for people apparently. like who have like uh, dyslexia and stuff. It's actually one of the easiest fonts to read. read so yeah. as much as you may not like it, I thought that was a really Just not a fan of the font. It's really, the like, same thing kind with co- choice, Comic though. Sans. Everybody yeah. hates Comic Sans, yeah. but apparently it's easier to read for like yeah. young kids and stuff. Yeah, but I thought that was cool. He was just making sure that, like, you I know, everybody could understand. I the impact font. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, your font, though. Who, who? That's the meme font. Yep. But. Yeah, that's uh, that's my first pick. Nice. All right, so uh, the next guy I got. Iconic. He's one of my favorite people. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. Yep. Another writer, director, director, director. There we go. Combo. I can't speak today. Big fan of feet. Yep. Yeah, loves his feet. Yep. I didn't know that until you told me that, and now I'm kind <laughs> of like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, every time you watch one of his movies, you're like, oh. So this makes sense. It it's like, why is there so many feet shots? Just kidding. Yeah, but yeah like, Bigfoot, dude. Um, but yeah, no, uh, huge director, really great uh, film base, I think. Uh, my favorites are obviously Pulp Fiction. I love Mia Wallace. She's like my favorite character. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and then obviously Kill Bill 1 and 2. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, I found out some really crazy stuff, surprisingly, on uh, Tarantino, because I, like, I didn't think he would have any crazy fun facts other than like the foot thing after I found out about the foot thing. <laughs> that's, but, if that's um, your starting point. Yeah. <laughs> I, found a, I found some stuff out that I was like, what? <laughs> um, first thing that I think is hilarious and so ironic is that he actually absolutely detests violence and drugs in real life. But like, that's one of the biggest things in his movies. Yep. Like He's an advocate against drugs, violence, all of that stuff. He's like, nope, I don't like it. I'm like, but why are you... Why and are you I've seen it? interviews, too, where he, uh, like, defends himself yeah. for, for using it. Oh, yeah, it's, like, to add the impact or something for yeah. it. And it's like, I get that, but I just, I thought that was so crazy. I don't know. I was like, whoa, okay. Um, another thing, too, that I thought was nuts was that after uh, Uma Thurman became pregnant, he refused to recast the role because he actually wrote uh, the role for The Bride in Kill Bill yep. uh, for Uma Thurman because he considers her uh, his muse. Like, he actually turns to her when he's having trouble and, like, all that stuff, and that's how he gets his writing and stuff done. And I was like, oh. Yeah, okay. they came up with that character together. Yeah. Yep. So it's like, obviously, he was like, there's no way that I'm getting rid of her. I, I thought that was kind of cool. I was like, okay, good to know. Uh, his first noted screenplay... <laughs> was titled Captain Peach Fuzz and the Anchovy Bandit in 1985. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just based off the name, I want to check it, it out, yeah. right? Why not? Sold. 
And obviously, he uh, often plays a very small role in his parts. If you look at Pulp Fiction, yeah, like Kill Bill, all that. Um, he's a huge fan of Half-Life, like the video game. And mm-hmm. he's he's actually been talking to people, and he's like, I want to make a live-action adaption. I, I would love to see that. Right? That'd be crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, like with Quentin Tarantino, too. Like, I feel like that would be a really interesting... I, I think he's, there's been, like, talks of him doing, like, a Star Trek as well. Am I, I thought he did do an episode. I didn't see I anything on it. I don't know if he did an it. episode, but I thought there were, like, talks of him, do, like, doing a movie. I could be thinking of another director. I'd be interested yeah. in that. I'm looking this up. Oh, okay, you look yeah. it up. Uh, and then, like, my last note that I thought was c- kind of crazy was that he hates CGI. Yeah. Like, in every one of his films, he's like, if we can't shoot it in live action, it's not going in the film. And I thought, oh, I respect him for that because I feel like when it comes to filmmaking and stuff, it's like making sure that you're being genuine, I think, is really important. So, like, for me, I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. That's and awesome. That's his vision as well. Like, yeah. He, he, ha- he has every right to do that as yeah. a director. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Practical effects just look better. You know? It does. Yeah. Like I have nothing against CGI. I think like in the right amount, it's needed. Yeah. But if you're using it for every part of the film, it gets to a point where you're like, all right. Yeah. He did two CSI episodes. Did he actually? <laughs> That's wicked. But yeah, no. Okay, maybe no Star Trek. Huh? Tarantino will. Yeah. Oh, well. I might Iconic. be. Th- yeah, it might be a different director. I'm thinking of. Mm. <laughs> Who you got? I got Takashi Miike. Of course you do. Yeah. That's a good one. Audition, which we talked about previously. Japanese director. uh, A filmography that is just massive. Yep. Because apparently, at least what the internet tells tells me, I I feel like this is probably hyperbolic to some degree, but um, apparently he never turns down a script. What? Really? Yeah, just a script will come across his desk. He'll be like, yeah, I can make this work. Didn't he also do Ichi the Killer? Yep. He did that. He did a... bunch of uh yakuza movies uh dead or alive series he's done kids movies god he's, tr- he's oh he was in hostel did you ever see hostel i think i did yeah a long time ago. eli roth movie yeah he yeah. makes a quick cameo in there Does when, he actually? The, when the one of the guys who's like gonna torture the one of the dudes he just kind of you see this japanese guy kind of walk on the screen he's like have fun and then just pieces out Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, that was him. I appreciate that. It was a little passing of the torch, I, sort I, of. I love little yeah. cameos like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where you see, you're like, oh, my God, that's... Uh. I, couldn't think what? Of a, I couldn't think of a name, so I, I made a sound. It's that guy. <laughs> the guy from The Thing. The Thing, that yeah. dude. So Takashi Miike. Yeah. Just IMD, IMDBM. And he got a full plate. Yeah, you got all the above. Yeah, a little bit of everything. And he's amazing. Yeah. I didn't know he did kids movies, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's one I can't remember what it's called. It was pretty obscure. It kind of flew under the radar, but it was almost like a it was almost like a Muppets l- Labyrinth type of movie. Hmm. Huh. I, I wish I could remember what it was called. Yeah. Well, um, my second follow through on that one. My second pick. Uh, it's it's not going to come to a surprise from anyone. Uh, Sam Raimi, Woo-hoo! of course, known hey. for the Evil Dead series. All the Bruces. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Of course, he did the Tobey Maguire Spider-Mans. He did. Like, kind of the first modern Spider-Man movies. Love him or hate him. Yeah. 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 Hercules, Xena. He also did Mantis, Mm -hmm. as we discussed (laughs) uh, earlier. And uh, if you want to see some of his first work, his first film, which was called Within the Woods, well, it's on YouTube. It's not really well lit or anything. (laughs) Hmm. And I... I think it's Bruce Campbell. Like, the, the footage is, like, so old that it's hard to tell. kind of sounds like Bruce Campbell. But, yeah, that was his uh, first uh, film. And, of course, he's now directing the new Doctor Strange film nice. in the works. So he's made a return to superheroes. I like it. After kind of the hiatus after the third Spider-Man movie. Yeah, the third one didn't go down very well. No. No. Oof. Too much going on. But Too much dancing. If you dancing. watch any of Sam Raimi's movies, he's got Did like you a see when Tobey Maguire's like dancing down the street. Yeah, oh, he goes right, emo right. Spider-Man. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. my bad. Um, but he's got like a couple. Like if you ever watch his movies, you notice that he has a distinct style, and you'll see yeah. things over and over again. One is kind of like a point of view shot of like a monster running through the woods. Yeah. Or in Xena, he used to use like a like a camera on a crossbow bolt, like a, a lot, kind of flying through the trees. Yeah. Also, a lot of face grabbing. If you watch any of uh, hmm. his films, there's a lot of face grabbing. And he puts his old car in everything. He does. Which is kind of weird. He does. Yeah. But it adds that personal touch. It does. Yeah, yeah that's my uh, that's my second pick. Nice. Well, I guess I'm on my third already. Um, 
pretty iconic guy. He's often known as the master of suspense, and that would be Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah. I feel like he's done a lot of great stuff. Uh, my faves are personally Psycho, um, The Birds, and Vertigo. Vertigo, specifically for, like, the shot that he created with, like, the dollying out and the zoom in. Like, it's one of those shots that I think I've been in quite a few movies after he used it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I found out some really crazy stuff about the guy. Uh, for example, when he was finishing a cup of tea on set, he wouldn't, like, put it down or anything. He'd be like, all right, I'm done, and just, like, throw it over his shoulder. Like, didn't care where it landed or if it broke or whatever. He's like, oh, somebody else will pick it up. And I was just like, could you imagine, like, the intern just kind of running around, like, crap, yeah. okay. Like, I got to dodge this thing before it hits me. Um, another thing, too, is that he had an extreme phobia of the police and eggs. Not related, but <laughs> I thought that was weird. Coming I'm, soon, egg cop. <laughs> there we go. Alfred Hitchcock's like, oh, no. Yeah. But um, the reason that he was actually terrified of police officers, though, is that his father sent him down to a police station with a letter. I think he was about eight or nine. Yeah. And um, he gave the letter to the police officer, like his dad told him. The police officer went, read the letter, went around the desk, put this kid in handcuffs and threw him in the jail cell for like about 10 minutes and then he came out and he's like what did i do wrong and he's like nothing but just so you know if you do something wrong this is where you're gonna end up yeah and i was like that's uh kind of messed up that's terrifying yep that, that, that poor kid uh, another thing too walt disney refused hitchcock to work on a film for disney because and i quote he made that disgusting film psycho so like walt disney watched the film and he was like i don't want anything do with yeah. this guy i don't want him to have anything to do with disney at all and um yeah when he got Probably his dodged a bullet there yeah. yeah i couldn't imagine alfred hitchcock disney film though alfred hitchcock's bambi <laughs> oh god <laughs> maybe you would have actually seen the yeah the death of bambi's mom maybe uh but then the last thing i have about him was that uh when he won his lifetime achievement award in 1979 he joked on stage that he was probably gonna die yeah. and he died the next year so yeah ha yeah, yeah. Gotcha. what a great joke. Yeah, it was kind of like one of those weird, like, okay, yeah. you shouldn't joke about Prophesize that. Prophesize their own demise. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Alfred Hitchcock, he's directed over 50 films, too, which yeah. I was like, holy crap. And so. as you mentioned, he's influenced yeah. so many things. He has. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he also had a book that I read when I was younger. It was called uh, Stories to Read with the Lights On. And I remember reading it, and some of them were really, really messed up. So, yeah. But yeah, definitely great uh, director, iconic in film, and probably wouldn't have a lot of th the same stuff we have today without him so no yeah guess that leaves me hey yes sir. sir i don't know why i'm checking these papers these are these are not notes you're checking your oscar <laughs> oscar nominations yeah. double checking uh david lynch for the win yes there we go racer head blue velvet twin peaks dune dune which is divisive very yeah some you lo that's a it's a hit or miss that really caused a kerfuffle in the sci-fi sci yeah. community the best thing i like about dune like they have dogs for some reason in the movie. There's there's no dogs in the book. <laughs> David Lynch just decided to put dogs. I, I like shot. dogs. Yeah. Everyone everyone likes dogs, right? There's a shot of Patrick Picard or not Patrick Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Same thing with a mullet and holding a dog in in Dune. Yeah. So yeah, there really is. Yep. Elephant Man. Yep. Um, actually, back to a uh, TV shows that we wanted to see a uh, revived. I'm going to flip it and uh, address the revival of Twin Peaks. Uh oh Yeah. It was so bad. Yeah, I haven't been hearing great it things was, about it. it. And, like, I'm a hardcore David Lynch fan. Like, yeah. just his name on something, was, yeah, I'm in. Yep. Done. Sold. Let's do this. I even signed up for Crave. No go, hey? I would, my jaw was just on the floor. I was so heartbroken. Was, it was devastating. Was he a part of the revival at all, or did they just kind oh, of yeah. say David Lynch's Twin Peaks? No, no, he was heavily in involved. Really? Okay. Yeah, and I was just, I couldn't believe it. Like, I, I don't, okay, yeah, Dune is a hit or miss, but this was just abysmal. I hated oh. it. I hated it. I, I've never thought I'd be able to say I hated something that David Lynch did. Yeah, that's really surprising. Yeah. It hurts. It sucks. You going to be okay? Yeah, yeah. He's still my favorite director. Yeah. And, uh, I mean... This is a guy who is making his first feature-length film. <laughs> and for one scene, he's like, okay, we need uh, umbilical cords. Where can I get umbilical cords? So he just went to the hospital and said, like, hey, like, you, yeah. you guys got any umbilical cords lying around? Like, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we got in back. Just give me a second. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah. Go to the umbilical cords. What film cord was that set. for? Racerhead. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh my god. So those are real umbilical cords, that which apparently you can just go get. You could just. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe it was a sign of the times. I probably can't do that anymore. Yeah, like I was about but to there, say, like there was a time yeah. when you could just go and they'd like, hook you up. It's like biohazard waste. Yeah, like I feel like somebody now, na- like now, like you try and do that, they kind of look at you funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, crazy. Go to your local hospital, get some umbilical cords. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, that's what he did. Huh. That's how to do it. Uh, and he was an Eagle Scout. Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my third pick is uh, Ivan Reitman. Nice. Uh, he did Stripes, Ghostbusters, Twins, Kindergarten Cop. Oh. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like a lot of the iconic 80s movies, 80s comedy movies that I grew up with. Nice. Oh, Twins. Yeah. Uh, his first producing t- job was at City TV in Toronto. Oh, cool. Really? Yep. Crazy. Yep. I know exactly where that is. Queen and John. There, there you go. go. There Much you go. music. Um, apparently, he's working on a Ghostbusters animated movie called Ecto Force. Huh. And of course, his son, the the new live action Ghostbusters movie, was directed by yeah his son. So, cool directing's in the family, Canadian connection there. I like cool. it. Oh yeah, CanCon. Yeah, didn't CanCon. Yeah, CanCon. Oops. Yeah, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I said, made a lot of the iconic iconic movies that I grew up with. That's nice. wicked. Yeah, I love that. Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> Tw- okay. It's not a tumor. <laughs> it's not a tumor. <laughs> Twins was the one where it was Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I heard rumors that apparently Jason Momoa and Peter Dinklage want to do a remake. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Uh, yeah, I'd watch that. Right? Yeah. But, yeah, side note, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so I think that brings us uh, to the end. Anyone got anything else? Yes. Matthew McConaughey has started his own YouTube channel. All right. All, All right. right. All right. All right. <laughs> I won't lie, I'm actually kind of excited. Yeah. It looks pretty. I already subscribed. I did too. Yeah. You gotta. Why not? It's yeah. Matthew McConaughey. Doesn't cost anything. No. If the dude can get arrested <laughs> in his own home for playing bongos. Yep. Naked. Naked. I think you can. You'd, you'd probably want to follow him. I feel like he's got some stories. Well, speaking of subscribing, don't <gasps> forget to subscribe to our channel. We're also on BitChute now. Yeah. Woo-hoo. I'm working Thanks, on Chris. getting uh, the rest of the uploads done. It's a yeah. Some, touch some of the back catalog. If you want to binge Media Minute Roundtable. And there should somewhere on the screen be a subscribe graphic. Some. Somewhere. I don't know where it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be somewhere. But, yeah, thank you so much for uh, watching. Uh, like I said, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, hit whatever you got to hit. Hit all the buttons. Yes. For Media Minute, I'm Michael Forward. And do do check us out on BitChute. We already have one subscriber, and it's very exciting. I'm Chris Raskowski. <laughs> and I'm Rachel Edge. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>